Hallo bei einer neuen Folge von Ohne Maulkorb mit tolle Zahlen. Die Sendung mit der roten Couch, wo man nicht lügen darf, immer die Wahrheit sagen muss, interessanten Themen und vor allem interessanten Gästen. Ich muss schon sagen, heute ist das für mich ein bisschen eine besondere Sendung. Ich habe auch so ein besonderes Kribbeln. Ähm, Sie werden sich ein bisschen daran gewöhnen müssen, weil da die Sendung heute in der englischer Sprache stattfindet. Äh, ich habe einen ganz besonderen Gast. Er kam extra aus der Tschechischen Republik hierher und er ist zum aller, allerersten Mal im österreichischen Fernsehen. Es ist niemand geringerer als my dear friend, mein lieber Freund, der zwölf Jahre lang der persönliche Assistent von Freddie Mercury war, mehr über Mercury weiß als irgendjemand anderer. Wir beide sind seit vielen Jahren sehr, sehr gut befreundet. And thank you very much, Mr. Peter Freestone, um, coming here and being my guest in my, in, my, in my program ohne Markup with Dolly Zahl. Of course, you have no idea what this means, right? No. <laughs> Well, it's a, without, you know what you give to, 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 to dogs that they don't bite? Um, Aha, muscle? Okay, okay. Is a it? muzzle. muzzle. Okay. okay, without muzzle, meaning you can speak freely. There is one rule uh, which I have to tell you. On the red couch, you have to say the truth. You are not allowed. You, can you I cannot, move? Huh? Can I move? <laughs> There is only the red couch. <laughs> I'll, I'll sit on the floor. No, no you never lie. I, have, I, I don't remember that you have ever not told the truth. Now, uh, Peter, uh, first of all, again, thank you for also taking the strain. You're in the Czech Republic. You're living yeah. in the Czech Republic um, for quite a few years now. I am Czech. And you are Czech citizen, yes. although I think you haven't given back your British. No, um, so you're I'm dual. allowed to keep both. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why did you go to the Czech Republic? I mean, I know the answer. By the way, I have to ask you questions here today where you know that I know the answer, but here for the audience, especially the Austrian... But then the Austrian... you know if I'm going to lie. Exactly. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, why Czech? Uh, there's a number of reasons. But I think the main one was purely selfish, in fact, because I wanted to be somewhere that I wouldn't be constantly reminded of going with Freddie somewhere down this street, down that place, to this restaurant, to, to somewhere. Um, and of course, he was never able to get to the Czech Republic. Well. Czechoslovakia in those days, mm. um, you know, because it was behind the Iron Curtain. Mm. Okay, Queen did go as far as Budapest, but the sort of the curtain was hanging looser mm. <laughs> over there. Um, and so this was a place that th would have no memories. Mm. The other reasons I just grew very, very disillusioned with Britain mm. and in the end of the 90s. I just didn't like what was happening, mm. um, politics, the, even the attitude of the people. Mm. One thing that you, you, you walk down a street and everything tells you what you can't do. Mm. Mm. You can't turn right, you can't turn left, you can't do this, you can't do something. Mm. Not come here and have a good time, enjoy yourself, do what you want. That had all disappeared, mm -hmm. which was what I lived through when I was young. Mm -hmm. I went to Prague, and I think like every foreigner who goes to that city for the first time, I just totally fell in love with the place. The architecture, the people, just everything, mm -hmm. everything about it. Mm -hmm. Prague and Vienna are very similar in architecture and I think also in, in, in the people, you know, yeah. it, it, is, it is closer than you think. You yeah, know, well, the thing is, when I first thought, oh, I'm going to Prague, but that's Eastern Europe, yeah. oh, that must be at least two, three hour flight. And of course, hour 40 minutes, because I'd forgotten my geography because in fact, Prague is further west than Vienna. <laughs> <laughs> and Vienna was the capital of, you know, the West mm, mm. in the years past. Why? Because, uh, no, of course, because of the classic. I mean, we have to say that you are an enthusiast and an expert in opera. 
Yes, you are. Even if you don't, yeah, you you know a, okay. you know a lot about <laughs> opera, and and we yeah. would, might come to this. You introduced Montserrat Caballé to Freddy, or Freddy to Montserrat Caballé, yeah. yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah. And whenever I, I and I remember when we met again, something like twenty years ago ish, you know, where we also yes. worked together. Yeah, yeah. You said you said you uh, you're going to to the opera house in Prague uh, once a week at least yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it has very good performances. Yes. Like the no. Vienna Opera House. Yeah, because the thing is, I mean, they use local performers with occasional guest stars mm. coming in, but the quality mm. of the performances are, are wonderful. If there wasn't Corona, as we are recording this, mm. uh, we obviously would have gone to the Vienna Opera House because that would have together. Oh, yes. Because that would yes, yes. one day we're gonna do this. Okay, we promise. Have to. We have to. I, I, I am I'm not allowed to lie in the in the in the oh, red okay, chair either. That's fine. So, okay. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is. Um, you know, um, we have to tell the audience that with us it's a little bit special because, I say this in short Deutsch. Uh, mm -hmm. Excuse me. We are both sind wie ein Mosaik, was den Freddie Mercury betrifft. Um, an einem Tag, wo ich zum Beispiel ein Video gedreht habe in London, hat Peter Freestone den Freddy aufgeweckt, hat ihm wie immer um 9 Uhr früh, 9 o'clock, den, den Tee zum Bett gebracht, hat ihm vermutlich beraten, was er anziehen soll, hat ihm das Auto gerufen, ist mit ihm hingefahren. Dann habe ich übernehmen dürfen als Regisseur, zum Beispiel bei I'm Going Slightly Mad, über das wir reden werden, äh, weil es ein besonderes Video ist. Und, äh, und dann habe ich den ganzen Tag sozusagen den Freddy gehabt, war auch im Dressing Room, da war er auch. Aber, und am Abend hat ihn der Peter Freestone wieder übernommen und gesagt, na, wie war es und wie hat es dir gefallen und was hat dich geärgert? So in other words, our mosaic of knowledge, I was explaining and you know a little bit of German, that on a day like when we filmed I'm Going Slightly Mad, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you started in the morning, I took over, you took him back in the back evening. Yeah. So when the two of us meet, um, there is two things. Please correct me if you see it differently. One thing is it makes me happy because we are talking about the most grateful, great person that I had ever the privilege to meet, yeah. Freddie Mercury. And the second thing is, um, when you say something, I remember something. Yeah. So it keeps going backwards and forwards. Yeah. More We're and more and more. And the thing is, what sometimes when you're talking, you're digging up memories of mine that I haven't thought about for 15, 20, 30 years. Yeah. You know, and that's, yeah. that's, that's wonderful. You know, that's... I know, OK, computers remember things a lot better than human beings but you don't get the pleasure out of a computer that is you do when you actually think about something. It's all very well, go click, 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 click. Oh, look, here we have. Oh, look, there's that photograph, that memory, that memory. It's not the same. Mm. Um, Remember when we said, when I was visiting you uh, before Corona in the Czech Republic, yes. yeah, yeah, actually yeah. to see one of your shows, yes. when we come to that That's in a right. moment, the talk shows, and then we were sitting on your couch and we were talking and talking and I said, oh, I should record this, remember? <laughs> and I did, but it was so many hours until this yeah. day I haven't even listened to it. Oh. Yeah. But you see, this is the thing with Freddy. Um, one of the things I think I caught in the German about Freddy, he was actually even though he might not, it might not have been planned or anything, but he brought a lot of people together. And the friendships have continued after, you know, for all the years afterwards. He was very, very good at that, very good. I mean, he gives us two pleasure, uh, and he's, I mean, on a day like this, now, do you call me crazy if I say I can feel it? I can no, feel him. I, not at all, because I. You know, bec yeah, because he, for me, and I'm really not a person who believes in talking to the dead or no. anything crazy. No, 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 no. I but I have so, I mean, even his language, 
yeah, that I have in my ears. Don't try to be second best, darling. Yeah. Meaning always go for it. Yeah. Just don't give a yeah, yeah, fuck. Yeah. You know, do something that nobody has ever done, like he did Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes, and everybody said, oh, it's seven minutes. They said, oh, go fuck yourself. It's going to be, and it was a yeah. world hit. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and he made the example. But in many things, or when Freddie, one of his words that I remember was always, oh, this is too clever, Rudy. You know, when you think three times around yes. the corner, yeah, he yeah, would yeah, say, yeah, 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 okay, yes, I know what you mean, but it's just too clever. Yeah. What, is your, what is your great memories in, in terms of um, these kind of things? <sighs> I don't know. I, the, 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 it's hard. It's hard just to come up. But do you remember the one. day when we did Slightly Mad? Yes. What was the morning? Explain, explain what the morning uh, with Freddie Mercury was in the house. This is Garden Lodge, yeah. where, where he hit the final in Kensington, the, the house that he built for many years yeah. after Munich. Explain to the audience, please, a day in Freddie Mercury's life. Well, <laughs> what... It didn't matter what time he went to bed the night before. Nine o'clock in the morning, there had to be a cup of tea at the side of his bed every morning. Whether he went to bed at two o'clock in the morning on an early night, or maybe five, six, he'd been working in the studio and he'd have three hours sleep and then get up. He hated wasting daylight hours. I mean, he lived for the night, <laughs> but the daylight he hated wasting. So, and he would come down for breakfast before 9.30, and uh, it was always two slices of toast, jam or marmalade, and that was it. That was the breakfast? That was breakfast. He would then go out into the garden, if it's a nice day, just to gather his thoughts, to get together what he wanted to do that day and play with the cats and feed the fish and, you, you know, the normal things that everybody does. <laughs> you have to say about the fish. Well, Freddie, uh, there was this garden. That Which this is house. something special in itself in, in Kensington. Yeah. Because it's very, very small, everything in London, and there is a garden yeah. in the middle of Kensington, which is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah he... um, I mean, it wasn't, it, it wasn't massive or anything, but he wanted... Freddie Mercury was the perfect classic, classical gentleman. Mm. Mm. If he had lived in the Victorian or Edwardian era, he would have fitted perfectly. And so he had his ornamental fish pond that he had built into the garden. With what With kind of fish? Koi, koi carp. But I mean, they were varying from <laughs> this size to sort of things like this. But what he would do, you, you have to feed them these pellets. Mm. You know, like you feed the cat. Mm. Um, he would put a handful and he would put it down to water level and they would come and eat out of his hand. Oh, nice. So this is the sort of thing that brought him, his mind together to working. And he loved cats. Oh, uh, yeah. Delilah. <laughs> there was... I mean, for him, his cats were his children. Mm. I mean, he didn't need anything more. He didn't need m more than those. I mean, at the end of his life, there were six cats in the house. It sounds a lot, but Garden Lodge was not small. It's mm. not your normal house. Um, unlike the film that said the cats had one room each. You mean the Bohemian Rhapsody, the Bohemian Rhapsody movie, Rhapsody not my film. film. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Bohemian Rhapsody, yes. Yeah. They did not have one room each. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but no, th they had the free roam of the house. They could do whatever mm. they wanted, which made it hard when we were all going out mm. because obviously all the doors had to be shut. There was movement sensors for the alarm and everything. So we had to make sure all the cats were out. Sure. So let's stay with the day. So feed the cats, feed the, the fish, and then? And then he would know by then what he wanted to do. Um, Garden Lodge days, he generally enjoyed having lunches. Mm -hmm. He would invite friends over for lunch. Most of his friends were in acting. Um, so they would have lunchtime free and they were working in the evening. Mm. So it would quite often, maybe once a week, there would be a lunch for 10 people. Um, I mean, he, uh, yeah. 
we would lay... We're not stupid, we were not. Joe Fanelli, myself... We, Joe Fanelli was in the house. He was actually yeah. the professional chef. He mm -hmm. was... But you were cooking yourself yes, as well. Yes, but yeah. I cook. Yeah, um, because I started cooking for Freddie when we were in New York, mm. in his New York apartment back in 1981 or something. Mm. Um, but we laid the table properly, you know, how it should mm. be. But, you know, you could guarantee half an hour before the guests arrive, Freddie's in the dining room. <sighs> Move the glass a little bit. Straighten a knife, <laughs> move that fork, and then he could say, "Oh, I laid the table." <laughs> but also, he did cards sometimes. Sometimes, where, yes. Where where somebody has to sit. I remember yes. once I was I was there uh, when when uh, Elton John and and Rod Stewart were were there, and I was. He said, "Ah, this is my video director." I was the little Rudy in the corner, and they were talking about forming a band. Teeth, nose, and hair, because yeah. obviously Freddie was the teeth, the nose. Uh, well, Rod, Rod Stewart has a nose yeah. like me, or even bigger. And uh, Elton always had hair problems, and uh, there was obviously a lot of alcohol and everything. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, no, Freddie liked champagne. I mean, he once yeah. sent me for, for or always sent me from a certain point on, from my birthdays, a box of um, crystal. La, yeah, <laughs> Röderer Kristall. I wanted Nothing to else. say. I wanted to say it. This is my show, darling. I'll go. Yeah, please go. Okay. No stay. <laughs> no, uh, but uh, coming back to, I'm going slightly mad because, uh, because I mean, I, we we could go through yeah. this all the time. But sometimes you go, you went to Sotheby's because yes, he was yeah, yeah, yeah. he loved to 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 buy art, uh, and he was sending you uh, because he didn't I want he, yeah. he didn't want to sit in there because they thought if Freddie Mercury wants to buy this picture or this it painting, must be good. it must be good. Yeah. But uh, let's now come to something where, where this mosaic uh, of you and me uh, is perfectly obvious for the, for the, for the viewers. For example, when, when Slightly Mad was, which was already at the end of his life. Yes, this was, uh, it was very early 91, Correct. I believe. Yeah. Um, this was, in fact, except for the very last video, well, it which was you meant directed. to be the last Queen yeah. video. Yeah. There was then another one, Days of Our Lives, which you and I, which which was the very last time he yes. was in front yeah, of yeah, a yeah. camera. I am very privileged to say in front of my camera. Yeah. He chose me to be this person, and I'm until this day very thankful. It was a privilege, but slightly mad was the last real one where he put a lot of thoughts into yes. it. And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, please, well, I mean, yeah, we got him ready. He knew he was going to have, because the thing is, you know, Queen videos used to take three days to create. But that was the Slightly but Mad, I think Slightly was Mad I was, think it was two. Well, he actually was there for one Okay, well, then one it was day. two days shooting and one yeah. day was... And Freddie was when there we did the, the gorilla day. thing and all this yeah. other stuff, uh, okay. Possibly. So, um, I, we, I went with him, we went in the car, we arrived <laughs> at the studio and... He went straight to the dressing room, mm. just just to re relax a little bit. Then, I mean, he did go then out. I took over. Uh, yeah, um, I worked with Diana Mosley, who was doing the costumes. Diana Mosley is uh, 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 was a very close friend, and yes. she was not only doing the costumes; she was also a friend. Uh, uh, like you, you will maybe explain later, who were real friends, and also explain why it, my book is called mm -hmm. My Friend Freddy. But the thing is that Diana Mosley was more than that. She came up with oh, ideas. Yeah. I have at and home. And also his own clothes. Oh yeah, she she started he with uh, with live concert things. I think. No, no, no. No? The first thing was that, um, is it living on my own? Oh my the, God, yeah, living on... With the mirrors. Oh, no, no, that's, that's another one. Uh, that's a David Mallet video. I yeah, know, yeah, yeah, but I, that I was, was born very, to love you. Yeah, that was the first... That was the first one where she where did this she white did, thing. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. great. And but from then, then on... But she ended up doing everything, including yes. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Including yeah, yeah, the yeah. famous... Uh, last tour outfit, yes. which is also on the statue and everything. Yeah, yeah. Diane Mosley is a very fine. I remember 
Um, she says that in, 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 my, in my documentary, The Untold Story, where also you, of course, are featured. And, and she told me about the last time when she met yeah. Freddie. When, that when made she, me cry. When she, when she came over yeah. and, and they were just uh, sitting there and watching television, maybe playing Scrabble, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then at the end, she says, and then when I was at the door, Freddie said to me, Thank you for spending the afternoon with an old man. Yeah. And then even I cry when I see this because she yeah. starts to cry. They all mostly, I think, loved Freddie yes. Freddy to the yeah, max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Freddie had a very good hand. Another one is a, a very good hand of picking people that finally ended up giving him everything of yes. their profession, but also their friendship. Yes. I mean, think of the producers. Mac was more than a producer. Yes, Freddie became, uh, you know, the godfather of his, his sons. Son. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, think of the um, uh, uh, the other. Uh, in uh, think Jack of David Richards, Richards yeah. in Montreux. You know. Yeah, yeah. So Freddie was. Freddie had a in in Ost in German. We would say he had a nose. He he had the nase. Yeah. Uh, dafür, uh, first of all, professionally, yeah. but also f that it fitted. Yes. The thing is, it's surprising, in fact, how many people he started, he got to know professionally. And very, very quickly, the line, the dividing line slipped over from profession to friendship. He was very, very astute. He knew who was going to be a good friend. He knew it. Mm. And it was, it just, it just worked so, so, so well. I mean, there's people, of course, when my book is coming out, who will say, oh, how can Rudy call his book My Friend Freddy? Um, no, um, this is the thing. I mean, unless you were there, how can anybody say yes, no, or something else? Um, you were talking about Diana Mosley. That started off professionally, but very quickly be she became a friend. She became indispensable. You started off with one vision. Videos. And <laughs> within a year or something, you were coming round to Garden Lodge and spending time with Freddie. He, 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 like you said in German, he had a nose for people. He, I don't know about you, but for me, every single person in the world, hopefully, I hope, I hope, has got someone, at least one person, that you would do absolutely anything for because you know they would do anything for you. Mm. And there were so many people around Freddie who would have given him anything and everything because that's, that's the feeling that he instilled into people. He, because... Not because he was Freddie Mercury, the superstar, Freddie, you know, the performer. This was Freddie Mercury, the person, the man, the human being. And he would do anything for his friends. He would do anything he possibly could. That was part of his philosophy of life, that if he walked out of a room, leaving some people behind, he'd made them happy. He'd made them smile. That's what made him happy. It, it's what got him through the day. To make sure that people around him were happy. Go on, darling. It's, but this is, this is the Freddy. Um, as I said, he would do anything, absolutely anything for his friends. And it wasn't, you didn't do things for him because you were buying friendship or anything. You did it because you wanted to. You did it because you had a chance to. He was such an outstanding person in so many ways, you know. Uh, yes, he was a great performer. I would say Ooh. one of the two or three greatest ever. Yes. Yes, Mr. Mick Jagger, I know you're still there. Great, Freddie Mercury, and then in yeah. the rock and roll, in the rock world, you know, he had the people. Freddie said, "Always, I want to have them in the palm of my hand," yes. and he had them. In, it well, went, look at in Live Aid. 
For example, he had the whole world oh in the palm of his hand. I remember, I was there. You remember, I was, and and then he came off the stage, and Elton was there, and he said, "You just stole out the show for all of us." Yes. Elton John yeah, 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 immediately yeah. realized that was the performance of the yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full stop. Regardless, they and could go on naked. Everybody, the thing is. Thing is they didn't intend to do that. No, but it was. They in went on stage to give their show. Yeah. And in fact, it's the shortest Queen show I've ever seen. But that was the great thing about it. Uh, because they didn't have to keep their energy for the hour and a no, half, two hours. Exactly. They could just give. Exactly. And it was so condensed yes. that you suddenly, then you suddenly realized, oh, wow, it's 20 minutes and one hit after the other. Yes. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah? Yeah. All yeah. you need is Radio Gaga. Wow. And the thing was that they didn't want to do it in the beginning, no. remember? No, 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 no. But well, talk because, about talk about yeah, it. Yeah, because the thing is they... They were on had, holiday. Yeah, and also they had not been asked to do the Band-Aid single. <sighs> right. Well, oh, was there some um, well, there was bad that, feelings? Not bad feelings, but, you know, if they weren't good enough to be doing that, why would they be good enough to do the TV? Yeah, because it was much more artists yeah, involved, but, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I see what you mean. I, did, I, never, I never thought of that. <laughs> see, Peter, we said we're going to learn something, <laughs> even the two of us in uh, Ohne yeah. Mark of Mit Storlitzeit. Um, oh, I have... better put, I better put a muscle on. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Everything is allowed. Unless, uh, as long as it's with respect. You want to drink no. some water? Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> feel free. Um, don't pour it on me if you're mad with me. No, but the thing is with... <laughs> Thank you very much, darling. Uh, the thing is, what you rightly said is... Uh, see, when he started to, to call me over and said, you know, just call me when you're in London, this was the moment when it was me it started from a professional uh, relationship where my pa ex-partner was involved. Yes. Yeah, we have to yeah, say yeah, yeah. there was uh, Mr. Rosacher involved in doing yes, most yes, of yes. the videos. But uh, um, then I was very often there um, and there was no band members. No, and no, there was no, no, no Jim no. Beach, the manager. No, this so was, you are no, actually no. one of the few, which is the reason why I asked you to, to contribute a little uh, um, forward or afterward yeah. or whatever to my book. You are one of the few people who can actually be a witness that, that I you really can. Because he wanted you to be there. Yeah, and that I was really Not afraid. because you were there to discuss the next video and no, to do this. And, and, to and do sometimes it was just watching television. Yes. I remember Miami Weiss was at the time one of his favorite. Remember, <laughs> yeah. and and he was always like, Rudy, look at that, yeah, at, at, at the colors and and what they were wearing. Which today, of course, it's it's dated, but yeah. at the time, mm. uh, some of the people were just sitting there and watching television in the afternoon, and they all were playing Scrabble. One yeah. of his. But you see, also the thing is, I think this is just a, this is from me. One of the reasons that you both got on so well. Because in amongst that performer, composer, writer, and everything else, he also had the mind of a director. Oh, yeah. He could see things like you saw things, and your minds just sort of went together. Once the original idea was brought up, then the, mi the minds just glued together. I call it ping pong. Mm? Yeah, idea, idea, time. And he was so quick. Yes. <sighs> Yes, 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 if yes. you think I am hectic or I'm fast, ma <laughs> darlings, Freddie Mercury was like five times my speed. Yeah. Something yeah. like that, right? right? I mean, yeah. am I right? No, no, uh, no. And, I was, and, the, and the funny thing was with the ping pong, with ideas when we did concepts, mostly in, excuse me, Mr. Yes. Water, Garden yeah, Lodge, yeah, yeah. and you had some special roles, we come to this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't, won't let you away without telling the story uh, uh, when you were Debbie Lang. Uh, but thing is that I have had had uh, um, um, was making notes. So at certain moments, I was like the secretary. What? Okay, Rudy, take this down, take this down. And then I was throwing in ideas, and then I had to write down my own ideas. And then the, he was already the next idea, and this went on. And that was the fun, Peter. Yes. yes I have yes. never 
ever in my life experienced anything like that and I please and you brought out the best in each other please I worked with so many had the privilege so many great yes. artists but the Freddie Mercury working process was mm -hmm. something I never experienced before and I never experienced after and the thing the thing that I found I mean it, it, it sort of great was the fact that the original idea would come from the person who wrote the song, what they Most felt. Most of the time, the, yeah. They would throw Remember, the idea it was, in. It was, it was John Deacon with the train. Yes. On break. But then... Da -da 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 he said the train. Once but, that, once the idea was there, then the person would back away and it was left well, to Freddie. Well, some person would back Most away. Most people would back away. <laughs> there were band members or a band member who would not back no. away. But the thing is... <laughs> we know who we he, mean. But the thing is, <laughs> Freddie would then actually create with mm. you he would create mm. that idea he would expand he would maybe put oh well this is the idea but we could do it like mm, mm. well there's two things i have to say let's stay with breakthrough breakthrough is the the das kurz dazwischen auf deutsch breakthrough is this video of the zug wo, wo, wo freddie mercury and queen auf einem zug performen und der wirklich durch die gegend fährt in the beginning there was the train yeah. But there was the first meeting actually with the whole band was in Pembridge Court Road, which Pembridge yeah, Road, Pembridge which Road. was the Queen office. Yes. And um, and they said it should be blue box or green box. And I mm -hmm. said, darlings, this is impossible. You are the creators of music video with Bohemian Rhapsody, blue box or green box, which means you pretend that yeah. they are on a train. It looks so cheap. You have to be on a real yeah. train. And John Deacon said, no, 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 I'm not going on it. Long story short, it took some time and we ended up uh, in Garden Lodge, as most of the time, uh, and as I'm explaining in my book quite often, writing or discussing the concept. Yeah. And we have to uh, explain to our viewers that most of them, yes, there was always Giovanelli there and there was also uh, Freddie's lover, uh, Jim, Hutton, Jim Hutton, most of the time, but you were also called for everything. Yeah. Like Freddie and Technics. <laughs> Freddie puts on some music and it doesn't work, Phoebe! <laughs> so, or uh, anyway, anytime. So, and Freddie, uh, please explain that I'm not this, not because you're my guest. Fre he wanted always to see things yes. in front of him. And at the beginning of Breakthrough, and now you take over, please, there is a musical part where the band is not yet performing. And we were thinking of various things. One was that he suddenly said, what about a woman, Debbie Lang? And then he said, Phoebe. And what happened then? <laughs> Um, you, you have to realize I was, I was a little bit thinner in those days. Um, the idea had come up of this, the old, the old silent black and white films, you know, where the maiden is chained to the track tracks, you know? Um, and so he had this idea of, you know, this, this, this girl, she's lying flat there but then she's able to rise up and, you know, get out of the way and blah, blah. And, and, and then, yeah. then he says to me, all right, I want you to be this girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are a girl. We can okay. see that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lie down here. And then he explained what I had to do. So he said, right, you lie down. You have your arms just to your side, like that. But then you sort of try, you do a sit-up. Yeah. And then bring your knees up and you stand up. And, to and the there's music. me on the ground, on the floor in Garden Lodge. I mean, oh yes, to, the, to music. the music. That yes. was the thing. He wanted to check out how long, because we were writing the script. How long it would take to get up. Exactly. And to stand. Exactly. And to, so, but you were also uh, <laughs> some of the time starting the music. Yeah. So you were the assistant and starting the music. Then and you were Debbie Lang. And lie you down. were the first Debbie Lang. Debbie Lang was, yeah. by the way, the the famous, very good-looking uh, uh, model, which became yeah. the mother of three children of. of because of she Taylor. she made her name with advertising chocolate. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, in a very special way. Oh, yes. In a very sexy yes, way, yes, erotic. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, if you think that that combination was... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but there was another thing, uh, I think it was also breakthrough, and, uh, and I know that you don't like to say that, so this is why I'm now... Um, making me say Making it. you say it. Uh, <laughs> where, uh, I think it was also breakthrough, uh, where he was asking you to dance like a ballet dancer. Yeah. Because that was the idea before the... Yes, before the thing. And you had to turn, I mean, imagine Peter Freestone. Could you do it for a us? A thinner version. Could you do it out now? No. <laughs> I couldn't do it properly then. Yeah. Well, so you, no, actually, I could. I wasn't bad. Well, you were was actually. I? You were actually. Just, and he said, "Turn around, turn around." And then you were turning. I mean, you have to say that you were involved in the royal ballet yes. yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. with costumes and everything. So you were. You were absolutely. I had an idea of you, what. You had to an do. idea of what. Yes. But I mean, a man again. Uh, you know, uh, um, of course, you were much thinner than I was. Than I am um, now turning. I was much thinner than I am now. Yeah. yeah okay. We, we, <laughs> We said it enough, darling. Uh, 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 I love you. Uh, then a turning, like like usually very well trained, slim dancers yeah. do. I mean, this picture. Unfortunately, there was no uh, uh, smartphones at the time. Fortunately, there no, were unfortunately, no otherwise, otherwise, I could I could now bring a document. <laughs> um, but one thing I want to, I mean, but this is this is how. Go. This is how deep he went into ideas to see if they would work, to see mm. if they could work. Mm. I have to say that, that uh, this was very, very great times. And uh, <laughs> no, honestly, and uh, no, I'm true. very thankful. And I, I really mean that because, you know, there's these days where every, everybody is me, 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 and I'm so important. No, 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 no. Yeah. When people are now also in social media say, oh, Rudy, legend as well. Yeah. Freddie Mercury was a legend. I was only the filmmaker. Yeah, yeah? I, yes, I did my contribution, but it, he was such a special person yeah. Uh, yeah. in every way. And he was also so caring. You know, I remember once, and I said this at another interview uh, for, for, for German television recently, uh, I, I was there just, you know, for something else or uh, for just being around, and he was borrowing somebody money, not from the house, some mm. outside person. Uh, he was, and it was quite a, Lending. quite a, quite a, huh? Lending. Lending, borrowing. sorry, lending, giving, okay. yeah? yeah? Or maybe even yeah. giving it just as a giving. gift, yeah? yeah? yeah. 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 And, he, uh, and I, was, I didn't listen, but I... I, I uh, there. And he yeah. said, there's one thing that you have to promise me. And then this person said, I'm not saying who it was. Yeah, what? And he said, you, you don't tell anybody that I gave this to you, because he didn't want to seem that, oh, Freddie Mercury is giving somebody money yeah. and making himself important. So in other words, he did good for doing good and helping people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not to be the Samarita, oh, he's so cool. Yeah. He, he, yeah? Wasn't, is, no, I mean, that, you, you that probably witnessed that much more often than me. That is him. That, 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 you know, we said earlier on that there would never be another showman like him. And for me, I don't know that I will ever meet another man like him, another human being like him, because he really cared more for other people than he did for himself in the end. He knew he was comfortable. He didn't have to worry about money. He didn't, you know, he could do whatever he wanted in his life. He knew that. So it gave him the chance to care for other people, to take care of other people, um, just to make them feel wanted. You know, you, you must know how sometimes everybody does get the feeling that you're just sitting in a corner and nobody's, nobody can see you anymore. Nobody cares. Nobody's interested. And he would never let that happen to any of his friends. He would never let them think that they weren't worth the talking to, the... That's why I, I, cannot, I cannot envisage, not at my age now, meeting another person like him. See, and, and the fact that, that we still talk about him as yeah, if he would... present. I was just going to say, as yeah. if he would come in through this door yeah. any moment. Well, uh, yeah? the thing is, 
uh, I've been asked so often by fans, but don't you feel Freddie's there with you? That Fred, don't you talk to him at night? Don't you? And I, I reply and I said, look, um, I was incredibly lucky to be with him for 12 years. He spent enough time with me. He's now out and about looking for anybody who needs to talk to him. You just talk to him. He's there. He's listening. So he's now out there for everybody else. He's, he's, not, he's not chained to the human body just to be in this one particular place. Anybody who needs him, he's there. He is there. And while people, not only like us, anybody, the fans, everybody, anybody that talks about Freddie, that listens to the music, they're the people that are keeping him alive. You know, I, I, it sort of upsets me sometimes when they say, oh, but you're so good, you're wonderful, you're keeping Freddie alive for us. You've... No, I'm not. It's everybody else who is keeping him alive. I'm just here to answer some questions to make things a little bit easier for people. Um, that they have to realize that he is around for them. I'm not, I don't believe in spirits doing this, this, something else, whatever. The way I look at things is that until it is proved that something doesn't happen, then I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to believe it can. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I that's why I suppose I'm the glass half full person rather than the glass half empty. Mm. So um, the day people stop listening to the music, the day people stop talking about him, then he'll be gone. But isn't that interesting? I mean, here is, here is a little uh, uh, something from a fan from, who sent me from, uh, from uh, uh, Portugal. Uh, um, and, it's, and it shows Freddie Mercury on yes. it. It's mm. Queen. Now, uh, uh, speaking music history, the version without Freddie Mercury exists longer Yes. With Brian May and, 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 and Roger Taylor as the original members, but with other singers yeah. than the version with Freddie Mercury. Mm -hmm. If you go in social media and you look at all the Queen and Freddie Mercury groups, most of them are Queen groups that say, but we are the Queen ones with Freddie Mercury and the Lambert, Adam uh, Lambert, uh, we don't, we don't want to talk about him or we don't want to post yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what is the fascination I'm sometimes asking myself, I mean, I know the answer, that Freddie is still much more popular than uh, yeah. my dear friends, Brian May and, and Roger Taylor, who are yeah. original Queen members who are still yes, on course. stage and making yeah, great yeah. music. Um, Freddie wrote good music. Freddie wrote music that people loved. Queen as, as now actually keep that legacy going because they play so many of his songs mm. in the shows. But um, really it is, and because Freddie was such an amazing front man, he was this showman. Um, you know, he, his job when he went onto the stage was to take every single person in that audience to make sure they were looking at him. And the thing is, he had this ability to be able to make everybody in an audience, even if it was a massive stadium, mm. each person could feel that he was performing just for them. Absolutely. And that is what, what makes, makes people talk about him. And what makes a great performer. Yes, of course. And, and, He's, and because Brian and says legend. in an interview that Freddie's job was to get the attention of the crowd. So that and he can play guitar uh, solo. Yes. <laughs> so that they can all sit and bathe in the guitar. No, that Brian can play a guitar solo. <laughs> yeah. I love his guitar no, solo. You know, he's he's I one mean, of the it's... best guitarists in the world. Don't oh, get yeah. Me wrong. Yeah, yeah. The thing that, okay, there's maybe one thing that does disappoint me a little. Yeah, but okay. But going with what you were saying, yeah, yeah. the 20 years with Freddie created 
so much amazing music mm. created. But the 30 years since, there has been so little. Mm. And I'm sure there is still so much music inside them. I know the whole, the whole atmosphere, the music industry is different, everything is very different. Yeah, let me, let me, it's, a very good, it's a very good point, but you know, since I was also uh, privileged to film, for example, when they were writing music together, yeah, yeah. you know, in my... For well, my even in One Vision, the exactly, very first Exactly, exactly. Maybe this missing link is missing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, because everybody always thinks, oh, Freddie Mercury, the diva, and he was... A... No, 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 no. He was the mother. He was the mother who brought yeah, people yeah, yeah. together. Yeah. When the other three were fighting, he said, okay, darlings, now, uh, yeah, let, let, let's yeah. find the peace. You know, yeah, it was yeah. completely different than you would think. But he was obviously, always, also, when Brian had an idea or Roger, he was trying to understand what he wanted to say and helped him yes. develop yeah, his yeah, ideas. Yeah. I mean, uh, Roger Taylor, whom I, as you know, I'm both very yeah. good friends, and for yeah, 10 yeah. years we, we were the party, the party <laughs> kings together <laughs> with, uh, with uh, you know, I mean, uh, thank God uh, nothing of that is documented because I'm not. Uh, it's a shame there weren't mobile phones in those days. I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Uh, but, and there will never be a book about it, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he once said, Radio Gaga, for example, you know, he went out and then Freddie did something to this song, which made it the Radio Gaga we know. But he said, oh, no, no, it's your song. I don't want the credit. Yeah, no, that was Freddie Mercury. I remember the very first time we were in Los Angeles yeah. and we were in this sort of porter cabin, sort of dressing yeah. room type yeah. thing. And Freddie and I were sitting in there, and Roger came in with his little cassette player. <laughs> At the time. So, darlings, <laughs> I have to explain. Cassettes are things. <laughs> no, no, hang on. No, it was, I know, you don't even know what DVD was or CD. Yeah. That was before streaming and download. Mm -hmm. And then there was even VHS and what have you. And cassettes were things like that. <laughs> and uh, there were little the tapes tape in, in there. <laughs> How do you explain tape? Well, by, by your shoelaces where there was music on. <laughs> Something like But the Please, thing is, and on. it was always, almost every, your favourite tape always got chewed no, but up. What does that tell the story? I was um, interrupting. I'm right, sorry. We, no, he came in and he played this piece of music. He said, I, I wrote this last night. I, I put this together last night. Mm -hmm. And Freddie listened and... Yeah, I, I, I can hear something there. There, mm. there, there, there. I think there's going to be something there. And that was it. And then that's when, as you said, Roger went off mm. and Freddie mm. took this tape and was listening to it. For me, it sounded like something from an opera. Mm. I mean, it sounded very classical. Mm -hmm. And then Freddie came up with this... You know, that, that whole... Drive. Yeah. 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 Um, the thing is, you also have to remember with Queen, um, one band member would come in with an idea, but that person knew exactly what the others were going to be able to contribute. Mm, mm. So if John came in with a f song, he knew that Freddie's voice was going to be doing this and Brian would create the harmonies on this and Roger's drums, you know, are just going to be perfect, mm. you know. So it took the pressure off of each of them. And they're the only band ever, I, I, and I was working with a lot of them, who really were, to the maximum extent, democratic. Yes. Well, The, the thing four of them were all for writers. Yes. You know, it was not the drummer. Well, he wrote Radio Gaga. It was not mm -hmm. the bass player. Well, he wrote another one, Bites the Dust. They all wrote world hits. Yes. Yeah. But they were also, uh, in the end, democratic. Freddie was never dominating them. No, this is what Freddie absolutely hated mm. when he read in the press Freddie Mercury and his band Queen. Mm. Because as far as Freddie was concerned, he was 25% of Queen. And that's it. Mm. He was the front man. He was the lead singer. But it was not his band. In fact, Brian May founded the band. I mean, yes. That, I, mean, I mean, yeah, because it was Roger and Brian was Roger and who were Smile. And, exactly. And Freddie joined Smile. Yeah. And then it became And then Queen. Freddie took over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, of course gave the band uh, uh, the and name Queen. Came up with yeah. Queen. Yeah. 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 And then John Deacon joined, and that was it. Mm. It just worked. I mean, um, isn't it funny that so many, or interesting that so many years after after he passed, uh, all those memories in you and also in myself are still so vivid? Um, I mean, there is. Yeah, but look who created them. Right. It's a tr it's, it's it's a tribute to him. Sure. As much as my memory, your memory. Without him, there would be nothing to talk about. Well, but I, I know what you mean. Yes. You know. I mean, what is also interesting, and maybe because I was mentioning this this fan, yeah. uh, there is 16 million organized Queen fans around the world. You are some somebody like a hero for them because uh, you go around, uh, you know, for many years, um, you do your own show, which is called a talk show, where you are putting uh, f photographs on it with Milan Satnik, yeah. uh, your Czech uh, collaborator and partner. Um, and uh, based on a photograph, you will tell stories, which I, I mean, yeah. I, I visited you and it's very interesting. And whenever people, whenever he's around, go and watch it. It's really worth it. Um, and uh, you also wrote a book. Uh, well, you wrote a book about your life with Freddie. Yeah. Um, 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 maybe, uh, but this book, uh, I wanted to show. No, no, because it is something special and it's very helpful. Because it's Peter Freestone presents Freddie Mercury's Royal Recipes, which is more than a hundred recipes of what Freddie liked to eat and what yeah. you cooked for him. Easy for everybody to cook at home. So you can be Freddie Mercury for an evening, at least as far as his food goes. Yeah. But the thing is, <laughs> this is the thing when Freddie, he always said, if he wanted, you know, deluxe gourmet, gourmet food, yeah. there's restaurants mm. that will do that. At home, he wanted home cooking. Mm. He wanted the food his mother cooked, <laughs> which was almost impossible to copy because he couldn't tell us what was in it. <laughs> it, we oh, have to well, say that he's born in Zanzibar yes. and his mother, and then he was in school in India, so yeah. that is the background yeah. of I the mean, food. I mean, his parents came from Britain. Gujarat. No, no, from India. From India, from yeah, that's what I said. From yeah, yeah. West, Northwest. But when, when, when India and Britain were... Yeah, they, it, was it was British. Still, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway. Sorry. But then they moved to Zanzibar. Yeah. But obviously took their, you know, their culinary... Yeah. Tastes. No, but them. I interrupted you. Sorry for that. Uh, yeah, no, um, but he would just say, oh, well, I remember there was this in it and there was something else and it had potato with it. And uh, and so we just had to try and create, recreate. And that's in what, the book. And yeah, uh, quite a few things. Yeah. I mean, we are we are also working on a project together. Well, we're working on one project together, which and is then another a secret. One. <laughs> but another <laughs> one, which I can at least tease a little bit, which uh, will be uh, about the, the years of Freddie Mercury in Munich, because it's the, the period uh, that is not documented well. And you promised me to go into one of his favorite restaurants, which is probably closed, but still at the, and, moment, at yeah. the moment, and cook there something out of your cookbook. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we have it in the in the movie. I mean, um, you are a very good cook, uh, although you although the, uh, no, okay, I will agree. I cook, yes. The chef was Giovanelli. Yeah, and because you train to be a yeah. chef, and the thing is, we have to mention that the the, the, the you were living. In this great house, Garden Lodge in Kensington, there was, of course, Freddie and his lover, Jim, Jim Hutton. Hutton. He always uh, 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 um, introduced him as, this is my husband, Jim Hutton, <laughs> yeah. Jim, uh, when there was no gay marriage possible at the time. Uh, uh, and Joe Bonelli and, and yourself, which was sort of the, the Garden Lodge community. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And unfortunately, uh, um, Jim is not with us anymore, and no. Joe no. soon after Freddie went, um, both HIV AIDS related. And I want to mention something. Oh, no, Jim was lung cancer. 
but he was he was positive. He was HIV positive. Yeah, and but it was this is going back to his smoking years. Yeah, okay, but yeah, yeah sorry then. I mean, I just knew that he was yeah. that he was positive, but yeah. he, he yeah, it never went over in AIDS. Exactly, AIDS. exactly. So. Yeah, he was. Um, it's good that you correct me. I'm not, not everything that I say is true. <laughs> Red chair. Oh my God! But I didn't do it on purpose, darling. You okay. want to take over? Right. Well, okay. The, the next time you are you're sitting in okay, my chair. Fine. And, okay, fine. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, I, I'm so boring anyway. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know what. Yeah. You've had your time. Okay. Good. Okay. No, but this, what I wanted to say, well, we can, we can stay on the funny path, but I wanted to be... Uh, no, uh, no, 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 honestly, no, no. is that um, as I... Uh, you are doing something very, very useful in schools and in various uh, uh, organizations. You are going and you are making, uh, creating awareness uh, for AIDS yes. and for HIV. Uh, and especially in a time where coronavirus is, is giving us so much... Yeah. Sad moments, deaths, uh, um, uh, whatever. It's important to stress out that there's people like you um, who have not forgotten that there was a virus many, many years ago. And he was, still, which was, and okay. there is still a yeah. virus. Please talk about your initiative and why you're doing okay, this. Okay. Um, it is called. The, it's called the TFA project. And TFA means Titanic Freddy. AIDS. Okay. Why um, is the you've name? You've already mentioned Milan Shatnik. Yes. He came to me, uh, I don't know, about eight, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. And he asked me if it would be possible to create some sort of a program mm -hmm. for schools. Because in to all educate. Of, to, uh, yeah. Because in all the years that he was at school, not once did he hear anything about HIV AIDS. Mm. Then the thing is, okay, back in the 90s, 80s, 90s, every celebrity was talking about it. Mm. Everybody knew about it. It was everywhere. But since the cocktail has been created, the cocktail of medicine, arrive, yeah. which gives people the chance to make to, a to living live, yeah. and to live, yeah. but it's not curing. No, because the thing is you have to take these drugs every single day yeah. for the rest of your life. Yeah. But um, since that has happened, AIDS hasn't, it's not as important anymore. Mm -hmm. But this is why we, he, I mean, he came up with this title mm. to compare the ship the unsinkable, incredibly luxurious, indestructible ship that was destroyed by something small with Freddie Mercury, the giant of performers, the indestructible performer who was destroyed by something that you cannot see mm -hmm. with your eye. And so we've, he, we, we, what we do, we've, it's an hour program we go to schools and there's a short video to start to show the Titanic Freddy. Mm -hmm. I then take them through the last four years of Freddy's life, of how the virus affected him. Mm -hmm. And there's no holding back, there's no glossing over anything, but talking about the cancer, the Carposis sarcoma, how he was losing his sight, all the things that happened right through to him dying. Mm. Then we have another video, the end, showing part of your, you My know. work? Or yes, what? Yeah. yeah, 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 the um, Days of Our Lives. Sure. To compare the Freddy at Live Aid and the Freddy. Oh my God, yeah. Um, and then we, it's basically open for questions. Mm. And we're talking, to 13 years old upwards, because those are the people who really need to know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How many people have you reached? Uh, so far, it's just over 16,000. 16,000 people were, yeah. were you were talking to, listen, and they yeah. were listening to you, which is, which is amazing, and I congratulate you on this. But I, you see, what, I, <laughs> what we do, we've, we do deals. Um, if people want me to go talking somewhere or Milan singing whatever somewhere, mm. the deal is yes, we'll go, provided they organise yeah, some of true. these in schools. Good, good, good. 
so we can get to... So you're combining it, you say, if you want to have yeah. the Queen stories, you let me educate people yeah. in the same, the in the same city. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Good. Well, very, very, please keep on doing it. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a... Well, it is a secret what we're doing, but it's not a secret that we will work... No, of course uh, we in will. A, in a, in Look, a close way. <clears throat> we know each other too well not to. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a, a project concerning your biography, which I'm not going to yeah. say more. Uh, and um, let me tell you that I thank you very, very much for being Peter Freestone and for, you know, in all the years uh, uh, with, um, and I might not have said this to you, it just comes into my mind now. When I had the privilege to work with Freddy, you were always kind, although there was very often very stressful situations which not you or me or anybody in specific was anybody's mm -hmm. fault. I do not remember you that you crossed the line of being a, a gentleman, a very nice, caring person. And um, I really love you dearly as much as a heterosexual man like me can love another man. And um, I hope that we were bringing a few interesting aspects of Freddie's yeah, life. Is there so. anything at the end that you want to tell people about Freddie that uh, is like the, the last word? No, but what I would like to say with what you've just said about me, how I behaved, how I, what I did and what I didn't do. For me, I was there to represent Freddie. I was just an extension of Freddie. So I was just being how I thought of him. Because, okay, of course there were times he would shout, but I also know he wasn't shouting at me. He was shouting because he had to get it out of his system. But he felt and he knew he could shout at me because I wouldn't take it personally. Um, Freddie, We've said it already, there will never be another Freddy. Not for me, not as a performer, as a creator, or as a friend. That's a very good final word. Peter, I thank you very much. Thank Meine you. Meine Damen und Herren, ich hoffe, es, hat, uh, es war interessant für Sie. Es war eine andere ohne Malkorb mit Dolitz als Sendung. Um, die deutschen Untertitel haben Ihnen uh, geholfen, uh, wenn man nicht so toll war im Englisch. Ich sage vielen, vielen Dank. Sie wissen, Sie können mir wie immer folgen auf meinen sozialen Plattformen, sozialen Medien. Und ich sage am Schluss, und das ist etwas, this is something that Freddy always also would like, I say, ich sage wie immer am Schluss, love and respect.